Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Krish Mangatram and I'm a Senior Cloud Architect with Okta. Uh, today I'm going to show you like uh, how we can do a, create a unique e email address using Okta Workflows. So in Okta Workflows uh, today um, what we do is basically like I'm taking the value which is important either like you can create a user in Okta uh, using um, regular create user flow with some dummy email address and then like that can trigger like an event hook uh, to workflow saying, hey, uh, uh, now like basically I, there's a new user found in Okta. So now basically like the workflow can basically run and do certain things. So here, if you look at what I did is exactly I did the same thing. So um, this can be like either like import using like import, for example, like if you have an HR system, you want to import users into Okta and the HR system basically like created a user in Okta and that can trigger this uh, event as well, uh, similarly to any user create event as too. So today, like what we're gonna show is, we're gonna, we're gonna just see like how uh, we can create that user. Um, not, uh, I'm gonna go and check what I have. So for this, what I have is today is I have a couple of things. I have like one is, I've set up a CSV directory uh, and I've imported like uh, the users into Okta. And this user is in staging table right now. For example, there's two users. There's Michael Schumacher, and his email address is created as shumi at jcrush.com, whereas there is like Tony Starr, his email address is imported. So this is directly coming from my CSV file. For my CSV file, I imported the user in a certain way. So now basically we want to construct an email address based on the company's logic. So whatever the way like IT wants, I mean, the, your company needs. So for that, what they, what we need to do is we need to really check on like uh, uh, how we're going to construct it uh, and what's the logic we're going to look like. So let's go and uh, look at uh, first of all like um, uh, I'm going to see a couple of things. So I have like the CSV directory set up. The user is imported now in Okta. Now similarly, like I also want to like uh, see the uh, the flow. If you look at my flow here, uh, you can see the flow starts with. Uh, new user created event in Okta. So basically like when the when you create a flow, you basically like uh, um, add this card and then say Okta card and they can say like basically like uh, what is the event you want to construct on. So uh, so Okta is basically like, the workflow is basically listening for any user created event. If there's a user created event, uh, Okta is going to call this endpoint and say, hey, there's a user created now in Okta. Now I'm going to read the user and take the first name, last name, and brand ID. Okay, so in this, like, I have something called brand ID. So what it does is basically, like, I'm going to show you, like, in this workflow, three different use cases. One is, um, if you're, uh, if you're, off, if you are an Office 65 customer, then basically, like, we're going to validate against Office 65 uh, proxy address. If you are a Google customer, then basically, like, your uh, your email has to be validated against Google alias, so that, like, you know, you get the unique username, email address. Similarly, like if you are uh, if you are originating everything from Okta and your Okta is the one which is creating the Google or email, maybe you can also like create like um, this uniqueness check against Okta proxy address field. So you can also have a proxy address field in Okta which is pulled from AD or whatever it is, and then you can actually validate against that proxy address field in Okta to generate that unique unique value. So in this uh, scenario, I am actually showing all the three um, things. So let's go and see like what how, how I constructed this. So if you look at that user created event, now I'm going to get that all these three things. So the brand ID is nothing but basically like I've created something called brand ID, and there is something called tables uh, concept inside my workflows. So in this table uh, provisioning table, what I have is I have something called brand ID, which is like three zero one zero six one zero five one zero four. So uh, you know, if, if your company has, let's say, like multiple domains, either like you have, even like you have like Office X2 have multiple domains, or even like if you have like, I have some, uh, uh, or there's an acquisition where like your company is using Office X2 5, and as like the company you acquired, like uh, has like a Google domain. So you want to manage both the users. So this is where like this comes pretty handy. So what I did is basically like, if this is a brand ID, that means like I have like a brand domain of like, Hub.com and then the email channel to Okta. Basically, Okta, that's, this is where I'm going to validate the user. I'm, gonna, I'm just checking. If it's 30105, then basically this is the brand domain, and this is where I'm going to validate the user. Similarly, like if it's 30104, I am doing jquist.com and Google, I'm going to validate. So this is the three different use cases I talked about. I'm going to show you that. 
So now going back to the workflow, let's go back to unique email flows. And then I'm going to open my new email generation again. In this new email generation, we're going to see uh, basically a couple of things. So uh, if you go here, so I'm going to basically like query that brand ID. Now I'm going to check against my row in, in the table. Hey, give me the brand ID and values for the brand ID. Now the table becomes like a property file pretty much like it, ha it holds all the data. So now uh, based on that email tenant, I have a different condition. For example, here I have connection. If the email tenant is actually O365, then do this. Whereas if the email tenant is Google, then do this, which is like a validating against the Google domain. Whereas if it's, uh, if it's not either of those, it's pretty much Okta, then I'm going to validate against Okta to see whether there is a proxy address or not. So let's go back and check like one of the things like I'm going to show like uh, maybe like uh, uh, the Okta field. So what I did in Okta is uh, I'm actually searching the proxy address attribute in Okta. Once I get the output of the proxy address, then basically all I did is uh, I'm parsing that value and I'm removing the proxy address from the body because the body contains every single thing of Okta provides. And then I'm actually passing to a subflow. This filter, custom, this filter custom card is nothing but like you can loop through the users where you can send the users one by one and then you can do some logic in the um, in the filter custom and that can return a list back to you based on if it's true or false. If it's true, then the list is updated. Whether if it's false, and then it's like not, list is not, I'm gonna show you like how it looks like. So here what I'm doing in this is like basically like if you have like multiple domains as I said, uh, for example, if you're saying like, hey, give me all the domains that's, uh, that for, uh, because in, in the search, literally I'm, I'm actually searching for, hey, give me all the profile proxy address. And that starts with SMTP colon, that email prefix, which is nothing but it could be like Krish, give me like all the SMTP colon starts with Krish, right? And that could be like Krish at our Microsoft, uh, create at Microsoft.com, or it could be like, there's also Krish one at, uh, or it could be Krish at, uh, jcrish.com there's a different domain so i could have like multiple profiles like that so now basically i want to be able to only like uh you check a uniqueness for this specific domain that's why like i'm doing looping through that subdomain um uh to check to give me a back list only that matches this specific domain give me the list of users that matches this specific domain who are already taken and then once i get that list then basically i'm just calling a dedupe flow in the bottom so which is basically going to do like loop through all the stuff and then return back the primary email to me. And if there is no, obviously if there is no uh, users with matching that list, then it's obviously empty list. Then I'm doing like first name dot last name and then it's brand domain. That's simple primary email. So now like once I get the primary email, I'm also calling a subflow called a proxy address, generate proxy address. And this proxy address is going to generate me a proxy address for me. And then I'm calling an update user to Okta to do like a primary email and proxy address going to be updated in Okta. Make sure this, uh, whatever the attribute you're creating, like in, uh, uh, you want um, the workflow to update, these attributes to be mastered by Okta if you do attribute level mastering. This should not be mastered by any third party vendor so we cannot update it or something. So this has to be mastered by Okta, that's keeping that in mind. So now let's go back and uh, do uh, a simple, and, and also like I wanna just show you like how it looks like in Ultra 65. In Ultra 65, similarly, like I created like a card where like a custom API action for admin card. And then I'm just uh, basically doing a proxy address. I'm just doing a custom search for a list of, give me all the list of like email prefix starts with this, the proxy address, all the proxy address. Now Office 2 provides me all the proxy address. Then I can just go and obviously the proxy address is the one which holds all the data uh, of like emails and everything. So that like you can, instead of checking just the email, you should check against proxy address. That's a very good thing. So once I get this, I'm doing the same thing. Nothing, no magic, no different stuff. All I'm doing is the endpoints are different here, each and everything. And also make sure when you import this flow, make sure you go to the settings and you create this connection first and update the connections on, on each and every section of the flow. So there is like a, for generate proxy address, there is some flow. And then obviously like, sorry, for new email generation, there's a flow. And then obviously like there is an email, um, uh, whichever, whichever has like a flow uh, connection, like you can see here, it says Okta connection. So you, obviously like there is a connection there, so you can just click on that, you can update the connection somewhere. So now let's go and do a test, simple test. So I have this user, which says Michael Schumacher here, 
and then his email address is saying show me at jcrush.com. Now I'm going to click on this user. Basically now the logic is first name dot last name. That's what our logic is. So we're going to test this like and also I'm going to go um, let's go and do a test. So let's do confirm user. Let's see what happens now. So now let me go to the Michael Schumacher profile. Let's see what happened now. Uh, So I confirm the user. Confirm the user means that means a create user event happened in Okta, and that should have called the workflow. And you can see my email address changed from Shumi at whatever it is called michael.shumakercreof.com. Now let's go and check the proxy address as well. You can see there is a proxy address created for me as well. So now if I go back to my flow, let's see the flow like what happened. So when I click on this new email generation flow, now it's going to tell me exactly what happened on the new create user event. So you can go directly to the flow history here. That should load all your flow histories. What happened if you click, click here, you can see like there are success events. So this is the first user, Michael Shoemaker now. So it, it, it got the user. It says like date and time and then it got the user. Now I'm actually created that user in Okta and got the first name, last name and brand ID. And then actually like I can go and search the rows now. 30106 is a brand ID. And it says its brand domain is this and Okta is the email channel. That's where you need to validate. Now I did all the condition now. It should have gone to Okta now. Look at this. So it executed the Okta flow. Okta returned back like, uh, uh, oh, there is no body, which means there is no SMTP that starts with this. So now basically like I need to go and uh, since it's empty, I constructed the username and the email address. And now like I'm calling a subflow which is basically go and create that uh, proxy address for me here, return the proxy address, and I updated that user in in Okta. So if you go back to my uh, proxy address creation, just to check. So generate proxy address, you can see the same thing. So basically it's like, I'm getting an email address, I'm adding like SMTP colon, and SMTP colon, and then I'm constructing like a list and then returning back the list. That's simple it is. It's not like too fancy. But you could uh, do uh, based on whatever the logic is. Some people want to uh, inject different things, so, uh, alias or something, whatever it is. You could do the same thing, whatever you want to do here. And you can pretty much go and check the history as well. That's that's how it is uh, uh, being done. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I want to show you today. Uh, and when you get this flow pack, just import it and make sure you first create the connections and uh, all together go to your unique email flow pack and update like the connection settings. Say for example, I need to go here and then you might be seeing like in the top where like uh, um, this is unknown, you need to just uh, select like your own domain. Similarly, like when you click on this conditions, you can go now and select the Office 63 domain here. If you are using Office 65 uh, and also like if you don't use like any of these two things, if you're just using just Office XY, you can edit conditions and you can actually easily like you can remove these conditions and you can just construct your own logic for this. You don't need to have this at all. So do, use what, what you want in this and remove the rest of the things. This is just to give you a guidance on how to create this flow. And uh, thank you for watching uh, my video um, and appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much.